Hey everyone, welcome. I'm Naomi and today I want to talk to you about the yoga of squatting. So I personally love squatting. I think it's a fantastic way to create not only mobility in my hips and your hips too, but also strength and power and even stability, right? It can teach you all of those things. And so squatting can be a really powerful practice to introduce into your yoga if it's not something that you already do. In fact, I think that squatting is something that everybody should do every single day for hip health. But what if you can't squat, right? What if you try to squat but you can't get your heels to the ground or your knees start to bother you or you can only go so far down or it takes you a long time to get there? What if squatting feels really impossible and nobody's ever taught you how to do it? Well, that's where this really quick instructional video comes in because I think squatting is a really essential and healthy part of every yoga practice and I want to make sure that you have some really good steps to help yourself into the squat no matter where you are in your squatting journey. Squatting a journey? What is now? <laughs> squatting is a journey now. Um, I think anything can be in a journey, an adventure. So. Let's get started on this squatting journey. I have a chair with me, I have a blanket, I have two blocks, I have all kinds of things to get you started. So make sure that you have those things as well or things that you can use in their place like a towel or a ball, large ball, like um, an exercise ball works really well, those are a little higher. Um, any kind of chair also works, couch, all kinds of things. So make sure that those things are within reach and we'll get started. So first things first, most important thing is that when it comes to squatting, it actually doesn't matter how far apart your feet are and it doesn't matter how far you go down, okay? In fact, the way that we're gonna start at first is simply with a chair, okay? So when you come to do your squats first in a chair, all we want you to do, rest your hands on your knees, walk your feet away just a little bit and lower your butt and reach your butt back for the chair. Now, it might not, depending on your knees and your ankles, you might not even hit the chair. You might not even hit it. Oh, I wasn't even sure it was there. <laughs> and then you lift back up. And then you lower down, reach your butt way back, and come back up. Okay? Now you notice, like, I'm starting pretty far away. You might want to make sure first that your butt will actually hit the chair which I didn't do, um, so I was really reaching for it. But here's the big key with squatting. You have to go back before you go down. Okay, the big mistake that a lot of people make in squatting is we try to go down and see I missed the chair. Now, good news, I can squat, no big deal. But if you can't, right, and you miss the chair, if you're just going down, that can create a little bit more stress in your joints. Not necessarily bad for them, but it can create more stress. And if you have any knee issues or ankle issues or anything like that, even hip issues, right, drama, I like to think, um, then missing the chair, for example, going straight down, might create more pressure in those joints, okay? So, hands on thighs. I know the chair is there. I'm going to reach my butt way, 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 way back, way, 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 way back, way back. Tap it down. I'm not putting almost any weight on the chair, and then I come back up. Okay, you're going to do that two more times. Reach way, way, way back all the way back, and come back up. Last time, reach your hips way, way, way back, and then come back up, and straighten your legs, okay? So that's a really great way to practice, and if it feels like too far, you can always put a block up on the chair. Oh, look at that. Back up. So you notice I'm not even going down very far. And back up. Okay, squat down. And back up. Okay? So once that feels really good, you can take the block away and try lowering down again. But the block is just going to bring the chair up a little bit more to you so you don't have quite so far to go down. Okay? So the next way that you're going to use the chair is to turn it around. So I'm going to turn the chair around so that my hands are on the back of it. Okay, instead of having my hands on my knees, I'm gonna hold on to the back of the chair. You can hold on to the sides too, top or the sides. And I bend my knees, 
Shift my hips way, way, way back. And then come back up. Okay, notice when I'm doing this, I'm not starting completely upright. I'm starting at an angle, right? My torso is leaning forward. Okay, that's going to give me room to lower my hips down and back up. It might even allow me to go further down because you'll notice I'm going to get to that point where my butt landed on the chair. I can walk my hands further down and take them, my butt, further back and maybe further down and then I can walk back up, straighten my legs, okay? So we're approaching this not so much from a fitness standpoint, right? In fitness, when you come back up, you're trying to pull your hips forward to engage your abdominal muscles. That's great. That's just not what we're after right now. I'm after your hips specifically, okay? And it's a really great way, full range of motion for your thighs would be, yes, taking your pelvis forward, but I first want to make sure that you can take them back. And once you can get your hips back, you can do this without the chair, lift all the way up and take your hips forward and get that full range of motion of your femur bone in your hip socket, okay? So hands back on the chair, just for explanation, hands back on the chair, butt goes down. Press powerfully into the inside edges of your feet, follow the big toe and inner heel. Maybe walk your hands further down, and then walk back up, and back up. And you still can pull your thighs forward, you're just not quite as much upright. Okay, a few more times, lower down, and back up. Press through the inside edges of your feet, lower down, and back up. And last time, lower down, this might be further, you might be further. I'm on the bottom rung of this folding chair. And I'm gonna walk back up and stand upright, thighs go forward. Okay, give your legs a little bit of a shake. So using the chair is a really great way to find a little bit more depth to go lower. You can also do this, by the way, with a doorknob. I just have no way of showing that. But you can hold onto the door, do the same thing, lower down and up, okay? Let's get this chair out of the way. Now once you feel pretty secure doing that, you can start working towards lowering down and holding your squat. So if I lower down, butt goes back, and I'm trying to find this block, I can sit on the block, okay? So I'm right here, and I'm gonna turn so that you can see from the front too what this looks like. I think the best view is from the side, right? But this is the idea, and this gives me a lot of support. So if I don't feel like I can just hang out in the squat with no support, the block underneath my hips is going to take some of the pressure off of my thighs. So I can just hang out here and have a little seat. Now, one block underneath your butt might not be enough. You can place two right underneath, one underneath each butt cheek. Okay, it doesn't matter. Same kind of support. It just gives you a little bit more lift, which is really nice. And once you feel like you can go lower, you can place that block a little bit lower underneath your hips. So this is a nice way of doing the squat once you're going lower down to create more support, right? So that you're not doing all the work with your quads because it's going to take some of the heat off of your knees, some of the heat off of the quads, and all of the heat off of your ankles in a lot of ways. Okay, so just notice the difference between this squat, right? My femur bones are still going down. My knees are still going up. I'm going to take it away. Even if my butt was still lifted, there's going to be a little bit more pressure in my ankles here because now they have to bear more of my weight instead of the block bearing my weight. So the block just gives me the opportunity to do a little bit less work, right, with a little bit more support. And again, I'll just show you what these look like from the front so that you can see. The first one with these two blocks looks like this. And I want you to note, too, how wide apart my feet are. Right? Feet a little bit wider than hip width apart is a nice place to start for a more narrow squat. Um, I'll show you wider squats as well, but this, you know, this is two blocks. That's one block, and it's somewhere, you know, it's, it's really kind of, um, the really just directly underneath my pelvis, right underneath the sits bones, okay, for the most part. Then this would be the block wider and sitting, right? So it's directly underneath me again, less pressure on my ankles, less pressure in my knee joints, because I'm sitting on something, okay? So it can be higher up or lower down, but those are some ways to support yourself with the block, okay? The wider squat 
right, would be feet pointed out, knees bent, you squat down and up, right? Now, if you need support with a chair, now you would have the chair directly in front of you, but I want you to be able to see what's happening, right? If I'm holding onto the chair, imagine it's in front of me, and up, it's the same idea. And now notice with this squat, my toes are pointed in the same direction as my knees, right? As my hips go down. And one of the things that tends to create pain and suffering in the knees is when the knees go in and the pelvis goes forward. You can show that from the sides. Right? Knees go in, pelvis goes forward, okay? What that does is it just creates really unpleasant sensation in your knees and your thighs and your ankles. And that's why it's so essential to learn how to get your butt back in your squats, right? Because if it's going forward and your knees are knocking in, then all of your weight is going to go forward, right? So that's why working with the chair when you're learning squats is a really, really great way to create that sense of practice, okay? Now the last thing that I want to show you is this blanket underneath the heels. And again, I'll show from the side and then from the front. So you can have the blanket as folded up as you want. But I place the blanket underneath my heels. I can turn my feet out or have them forward, okay? As long as your knees are pointing in the same direction as your ankles, doesn't matter, okay? And I'm gonna squat down. And that's just gonna give my ankles a little bit more support while still creating some really strong action in my hips and in my knees, okay? Now, usually this is the case if somebody can squat down but their heels don't come down. So if you're one of those people rolling up a blanket or a towel so that you have a little bit more lift for your heels is going to take some of the heat off of the ankles and make it a little bit easy for you to, to lower down, right? So what it looks like from the front, just awkwardly turning around, is being here, right? Blanket is underneath my heels and it gives me a little bit of a lift. The blanket can be as high up as you need it to be, or you can have two. I happen to have one out with me right now, but that's a little bit higher. Just get the hair out of the way. <laughs> right, that's just a little bit higher. And again, I'm still pretty low down, right? Because the mobility is there in my hips, but it's not there in my ankles. And so having the, the blanket underneath my ankles is gonna make it a lot easier for me, right? To come on back up, okay? So those are, the many ways that you can modify and support your squats while you're learning how to do them safely and to create safer and stronger and healthier actions in your hip joint, your knee joint, and your ankle joints. If you have any questions about this, I would love to answer them. Like I said, I love squatting. I love doing it in lots of different ways. So once you learn how to squat with both of your legs on the ground, you can actually start doing it asymmetrically. So having one balancing on one leg and like tucking the knee behind, doing lateral squats, all kinds of things, right? And the big keys are this, and I'm gonna go over them one more time. Butt goes back, right? Butt goes back, way, way, way back. Inside edges of your feet root down, right? So you stay connected to the inside edges of your feet as much as you can, and knees stay in line with your ankles and with your toes, right? So your knees don't go where your feet are not. Hopefully that made sense, right? Your knees and your feet move in the same direction, okay? Now this doesn't mean, I wanna add a caveat to that, it doesn't mean that that always has to be the case, but particularly if you have any drama in your knee or your hip or your ankle joint, keeping your knee aligned with your ankle and your toes is gonna to give you a little bit more support at first, okay? So that's important at first. You can certainly change it later so long as your knees and your hips and your ankles are healthy, okay? So again, hips go back, inside edges of your feet root down, and knees and ankles stay roughly in the same alignment so that you create more support from ankles up through your knees up to your hips, okay? So hopefully this has given you some really, really great action that you can take to add squats to your everyday life so that you can feel a little bit healthier in your hips every single day. Thanks for tuning in. Again, let me know if you have any questions at all about this. I would love to hear how this has impacted your squat practice and your daily yoga practice. And until I see you again on the mat, be well. Bye.